You should call me on the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leave your number, I'll text you. <laughs> Late at night. <laughs> I don't know what this is about, this arm here. I don't know. My uh, next guest tonight is a best-selling author of horror books, uh, The Enemy and the Dead. He's a fabulous writer. These books are in stores now. I've known this guy for a very long time, most of it when I was drinking. <laughs> Please welcome my pal Charlie Higson, everybody. Charlie Higson. Higson of the Higsons. Look at you wearing tweed. I I have to tell you, this and this, these books are scary and frightening. Yeah, well, they're supposed to be. Yeah, well, yeah but the, the, what the hell happened to you, man? You used to write jokes, and now you write scary stuff. People are hurt horribly in these books. Yeah, yeah well, they're well, for kids. <laughs> yeah, horror books for kids. How did that happen? Kids, kids love horror. You know, I mean, I've got three boys, and they're obsessed with it. And if right. you're going to write... And books, you have children, too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> See what I did? See what I did? Even my friends don't get away with it here! I'm not going to have to cup your balls, am I? <laughs> you want to sell a book? You want to sell a book? <laughs> well, I do appreciate that. <laughs> You're certainly from a colder climate than Southern California. So how come? Your, your kids got, got you into writing horror then? Is that what it was? Yeah, I mean, they, particularly my oldest was really into horror. And I started out writing... Uh, I did some young James Bond books for kids because I wanted to write something my kids would enjoy and I was offered a job and I thought, yes. But then, uh, then I thought, well, I need, I'm going to write some of my own stuff. And I thought, well, horror is the, thing, the way to go. Yeah, plus you could draw on your experience from when you and I worked together in, uh, back in the day. You, were, you had a terrible alcohol problem back then, Charlie. Yeah, but... <laughs> Luckily, you know, I, I could stand next to you and nobody noticed it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was thinking of you today, actually, because I'm staying in the hotel down the road. You have those key cards. Yeah. And I remember, because uh, I, I used to write uh, jokes for Craig a long time ago. Yeah, we, we did yeah. A, a, They were great. A, Thanks. A, <laughs> well, luckily, it, it, it all went so horribly wrong, you had to come out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I remember we, were, we did a tour that I was also kind of performing on, and I remember it was one of the early nights. Uh, we were staying in this hotel, and you came down. You said, oh, I can't find my key card. Yeah. I won't do the accent, and I won't impersonate just how drunk you were. Yeah, I was... And you, you were getting another key card off, off, the, off the guy at the desk, and you kept coming down. You kept coming down. You couldn't get into... You, uh, we found you in the morning asleep in the corridor <laughs> with seven key cards. <laughs> In different pockets. <laughs> yeah. So my, my drinking... Good times, yeah. I, was, I, I don't drink anymore. I haven't had a drink in a long time, you know, but I still miss the key. I still got those key cards as well, seven of them. <laughs> you, still, you still perform, don't you? You still do some I still do performing, yeah. I mean, I, I love the writing, but I, I do still like doing TV, and, I, and, you know, I've just done a new TV series. Well, it's actually going out online, but... Uh, well, that's the way forward so. now. These, these things are... Well, things I think, you know, I think it is. You know, the people with the money, they're going to say, well, you know, why do we go through TV? Let's just make our own TV online, because it's so easy now. Who the hell invited this guy here? <laughs> what the hell, man? No, so, and it's the Fast show you did, Brad. It was a huge success, wasn't it? The fast it was show? a big, it was a very big, I mean, comedy, English comedy, some of it, send over here. Recently, people like Ricky Gervais, but back then, not much of it was exported. And it was, it was huge in England. Yeah. In fact, for... Johnny Depp appeared in one episode. Really? Yeah. Jeez, that's, he, that's he was a big, big. He's a big fan of English comedy. Yeah. And did he do? He, did he do that Irish accent he did in that movie? No, no. He was playing an American. He was playing an American. Yeah, yeah. We had, we got, they had these two characters who were two tailors who work in a shop, and they make extremely inappropriate personal comments to people who come into the shop. And he said, "Guys, is it based on the show in any way?" <laughs> He said, you know, and he got in touch and he said, guys, you know, I'd really love to be on the show. So we put him in a sketch as an American who comes into the shop and these people are extremely rude to him. He loved it. <laughs> that's, that's the same technique I try and use here. So are these going to be made into movies then? They? Well, they might be. I mean, the thing is, they're, they're pretty extreme. Because the fantastic thing is, and don't tell anyone, you can get away with a hell of a lot more in a book than you can in a movie or game. Shut up! Is that true? <laughs> is that true? 
for kids because people are so obsessed with like, oh, kids don't read books anymore. All they want to do is play, watch these violent movies and play games. But you say, well, you could make these books so much more violent than the, than the movies and the games. We're sort of kids love them. <laughs> These politicians. God bless you, Charlie Hickson, for, for bringing the kids back to the library. No, it's great. <laughs> well, you know, we were, we were worried when we started, you know, would they be too extreme? And in fact, you know, there isn't kind of like, there's no, I thought maybe there was a big rule book, how far you're allowed to go when you're writing for younger readers. I mean, these, these are for kind of younger teens. And there isn't. There's no set of rules. So I thought, how am I going to judge what to do? So all I could do was read it out to my youngest kid at the time. It was way too young for the books. He was only 10. Right. As a bedtime story. <laughs> and I figured out, you know, let's kind of gauge you how far... You may be even a, a worse father than me. You realise that. <laughs> I started, uh, you know, I'd started reading it. We came to the first really scary, gory bit, and I thought, God, he's going to be really freaked out. And I read it to him, turned around, nothing. He's like grinning. You bet. He said, you're not frightened? He said, no, no, that was great. I enjoyed it. Oh, I loved it when his eyeballs exploded or whatever. <laughs> but um, I realised, you know, modern kids, they're harder to scare. They're... I went to my son to see Captain America. He's only 10, and his favourite bit is when the guy went through the jet engine and turned into paste. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, that was awesome! I <laughs> know, oh, we've come a long way since Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. But, so, but you know... I... The hell, man? <laughs> So I realised, you know, to scare modern kids, you've got to push it further. So when I came to write the next really scary bit in the book, I really pushed it further. Same thing, he's refusing to get scared. So I thought, OK, he's laid down a challenge here. And I pushed it and pushed it and made it gorier and nastier and more upsetting. I mean, the idea of the books is that all the adults have basically become zombies and they're trying to catch kids to eat. Yeah, eat children, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, uh, and eventually, we're about halfway through the book, I, you know, I read to him and he went to sleep and I went down to bed. And then about four in the morning, it was a kind of like the bedroom door and he comes bursting in and he's covered in sweat and uh, his hair's plastered to his face and he's shaking so he'd had this really awful nightmare based on the book and I thought yes yeah that's a Charlie Exit I know I thought yes finally there got were. the little bastard <laughs> we're out of time Charlie I don't think we even have time for a uh, uh, well I tell you what here's 50 bucks Raggy back to Britain <laughs>